You know the stuff at the bottom of that old swimming pool you used to swim in as a kid? Well, that was algae. At church camp, we used to joke how the algae was going to get us. I believe now that the algae did less harm than the chlorine. Although if algae is growing in your swimming pool, there are probably other things as well. Maybe nasty bacterial things, not just friendly algae flora. Also, algae can get out of control, producing a red tide when water conditions are just right. The approximately 2% of algae types that fall into this genotype can be dangerous, especially in massive concentrations. Fumes can be noxious and bronchial and nasal irritation can develop. This is connected often to the presence of nitrates from fertilizer and industrial runoff. This is in the modern era largely a man-made phenomenon. When the little microscopic single-cell plant dies, it of course decomposes. In the decomposition, bad smells can occur. Also, fish can be killed, but only indirectly by the algae. When nutrition and conditions are hitting on all eight cylinders, the algae grows so fast that it consumes most of the oxygen in the water and the fish die off from the lack thereof. Saying all this, chlorella is not toxic for human consumption, at least not in any levels that you could possibly eat. It's a little complicated, however. During the detoxification process, the poisons pulled loose from the system by the chlorella can bring on headaches and feelings of malaise as the body starts to detox. From personal experience, I know that at times mental confusion and a diminution of concentration can occur. If this gets too intense, it can be time to back off the chlorella for a few days. Also, to get the benefits of chlorella, it needs to be cracked. In other words, to have its cell walls pulverized for easier digestion. Without this process, the algae is much harder to digest and will cause more of a reaction. Also, people react differently to certain substances and some tolerate the algae less than others. Well, this is some background info on chlorella, but it's only a start. Here's an individual's personal experience. If you've worked in a mine or a refinery or lived in a specially polluted area, there is a good chance that you have ingested some heavy metals or other toxins. If you eat a lot of processed foods or beverages, take vaccines or many types of medication, there is a good chance as well you've had some kind of toxicity problem. Even eating chicken, beef, or seafood can get you in trouble. Not to mention the mercury fillings that dentists have used for many decades and still use today. Side note, the American Dental Association now recommends against their use, but this is generally kept pretty quiet. Well, I fit into at least two of these categories. I have worked in a refinery and have a whole mouthful of mercury fillings. Some call them silver amalgam fillings. And also, I grew up for years in coal country in West Virginia and Dow Chemical country as well at a time when they blew out unchecked poison out of their smokestacks no filtering whatsoever well in later middle age i had some tests done was high on cadmium and some other heavy metals also mercury was suspected sometimes mercury will not show up in a lab test the detoxification process needs to commence first to shake up the element within the body that has stashed it away deep within itself the detoxification regimen included Corella. When you're pulling mercury or other heavy metals out of the brain and nervous system, it's best to employ a natural path or a good holistic physician, but the techniques are widely known and have been tested for years, and if it all gets too intense, well, just stop for a while. The formula goes like this, three days on, 11 days off. It consists of Corella, cilantro, and alpha-lipoic acid. Take three times per day, alpha lipoic acid three times per day, and a thumb and forefinger full of cilantro, also three times a day. The cilantro should be brought to a boil, but not cooked for long. This removes certain bitterness. Preferably, the cilantro should be homegrown or organic. Each of these substances works in certain ways. The cilantro will detox metals that the body has cleverly hidden away in the nervous system and in connective tissue and fat cells. The alpha lipoic acid plays an intermediate role, and the chlorella, of course, works right in the gut. The thing to be careful with here is to make sure that the detox runs its full cycle. 
The thing that we don't want to do is shake up the toxic metals or substance, flush it out where it is hiding, and then not flush it out of the body completely entirely. The body hides these poisons where it figures will, it will do the least damage, and we want to leave it there or get rid of it entirely. <laughs>